the uh, software we have for you. Go to WSA9.com and go to weather and just go scroll down the drop down menu and go to hurricane tracker and you can download it and here we've loaded this up for you and you can track it right along with us. I mean there is a storm and this is the absolute latest in terms of information. You can see it going back offshore off of uh, Florida and it gives you the rainfall and the, and the hours and then the path of the storm. It also has a tremendous history file uh, if you want to play around and compare it to tracks of other storms. So check it out, WSA9.com. It's free and it's, well, pretty cool. Derek, you're pretty cool too. <laughs> Thank you, Top. Appreciate it. So speculation is swirling tonight about when Senators John McCain and Barack Obama will name their vice presidential picks. But people are also just trying to figure out who those picks will be. Joining us now with more on the possible VP picks, Patrick Gavin with the Washington Examiner. Now, Patrick, let's talk timing first of all here. Some are saying, okay, I'll admit, I saw it on Drudge. It could be as soon as tomorrow morning for uh, Senator Obama. Are you hearing that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody knows for sure. You're hearing uh, estimates ranging from tomorrow to possibly this weekend. So you really can't believe whatever the latest rumor is. You just have to wait to see when it's going to happen. Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that Senator McCain's pick will be a little bit more easy uh, to nail down, which is that he's probably going to want to do it right after the Democratic convention in Denver to steal whatever thunder and buzz Obama gets out of that convention. So look for that on uh, the Friday after the convention next week. As for Obama, we'll all just be sitting around and waiting to find out. And his supporters will get a special text message, I guess, when he makes the pick. Why do you think he's doing that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it certainly is a new type of politics, which is what Obama's campaign uh, espouses to be. Second of all, in order to send those text messages, he has to get your phone number. You have to text the campaign saying, I want to get that. And once he has that information, he can use that in a number of ways. He can let you know where to go vote in your district. Uh, he can send out pleas for campaign donations. He can send out you news. So it's a great way to appeal to younger voters, uh, especially people who are all over their cell phones, maybe don't have a landline. So even though it's sort of hip to announce his pick by text message, it's also an incredibly smart uh, politics move, too. Okay, we know, we've heard the names already. Senator Biden, Evan Bay of Indiana, and perhaps Tim Kaine of Virginia. Any hints which way Obama's going and how has he been able to keep this so secret? Yeah, there's, there's no hints whatsoever, just sort of what the Beltway buzz is. There's a lot of buzz right now leaning towards uh, Joe Biden. He brings some foreign, some foreign policy credentials. Tim Kaine, the Virginia governor, I think is losing a little buzz, namely because uh, former Virginia Governor Mark Warner was picked as the keynote speaker on Thursday, so that's a lot of Virginians he'd want to put at the head yeah. of the plate. But he might do that as well, because that's going to be a crucial swing state. Very, very quickly, Patrick, Joe Lieberman for John McCain, any chance of that really happening? I don't know. There is, there is some talk about that today. I find that a little bit hard to believe. Um, you know, McCain's certainly not going to win any of those crucial conservatives by picking basically a lifelong Democrat. And Lieberman doesn't have that charisma that McCain really needs. He's certainly a very nice guy, but isn't exactly uh, going to beat Obama in the charm category. So, you, so you're thinking McCain and Lieberman would be the boring ticket, is what you're really saying? I think it might. Uh, I understand. Patrick Gavin, thanks. It's been fun chatting with you. And by the way, you can keep track of Campaign 2008 at WSA.com. Just click on News to get the elections page. That's where you can also take our candidate match game. Find out whose beliefs match up with your own. You may be surprised. Anita? Okay. Here's one that I don't think is a big surprise. We have an update now on the Bigfoot story we told you about last week. Turns out it was a hoax. No. Uh, yeah. No. Yes. No. A group calling itself Searching for Bigfoot got its hands on what it believed was a frozen Sasquatch. They say it came from men who claimed to have found Bigfoot in the woods of northern Georgia. But as the ice began to thaw, it became apparent the frozen remains were actually... <laughs> A rubber ape costume. No kidding. <laughs> so the Bigfoot legend lives on. Or it dies. I mean, good grief. Oh, wow. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, a minor change can make a big difference in a common heart procedure. Serious stuff. Yes. More on that in the connection between stress and allergy. That's next in Living Well. Brett? Well, Anita, it's Tuesday, and that means time for another edition of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Tonight, the receiver who lost his head, the outfielder who lost control of his bladder, and the baseball game that became a pet cemetery. That and more, as if you need any more, tonight in GBU. We're back on 9 News Now, right after this. 
tonight. High gas and food prices are leaving families with little left for school supplies. But see who's helping to keep kids learning. Tonight on the CBS Evening News with Katie Carr. Yes, that bus, it's a friend.